Okay, welcome to Gordon Law's presentation of the SEC's crypto crackdown, how to avoid SEC pitfalls and protect your business. I am your host, Michael Branwine. I am a tax and business attorney here at the Gordon Law Group. Perhaps you've seen some of my other webinars, TikToks, and other masterful work. I like to consider myself the, maybe not the best attorney in this field, but definitely the best looking attorney, or certainly the best looking attorney in my office currently right now doing this webinar. I think I've got, I think I've got the ability to say that. Um, so I'm going to be the one guiding you through this fantastic journey with respect to the SEC and the crypto crackdown. So, you know, individuals and businesses, they operating in the securities market, you have to comply with the SEC or the Securities and Exchange Commission to avoid paying millions of dollars in penalties or worse, even jail time in theory. So crypto's rise in popularity has forced the SEC to closely monitor things like NFTs and DAOs. Perhaps you've heard of them. You probably have if you're watching this and identify which are considered securities and therefore must comply with SEC rules and regulations. So the purpose of this webinar is to help you focus and gain a better understanding on the SEC's role regulations uh, with respect to crypto, NFTs, DAOs, things like that, and why you should always comply. So here is what we're going to be covering. Uh, just a few main topics, six of them. Number one, what is the SEC? Number two, what are securities? Number three, the SEC rules and regulations. Four, who needs to register with the SEC? Five, why register enforcement and penalties? And six, how to protect yourself against the SEC. Um, if you have questions throughout this webinar, use the Q&A box on the right of your screen. This webinar is pre-recorded, so you can watch it any time. Um, if you leave a question, we'll do our best to respond as soon as we can. Um, I got to get through some legal stuff as well, as you can see at the bottom. Legal stuff, that's how you know it's legal stuff. This webinar is for general informational purposes only. It is not legal or tax advice. It should not be interpreted to indicate a certain result will occur in your specific situation. Watching this webinar, webinar does not create an attorney-client relationship. Okay, so here we go. About me. Well, there's my face. You can see my beautiful face on our website. Uh, I am a senior attorney at the Gordon Law Group. I like to think that I help people save money and avoid legal trouble. I think that's fair to say. Uh, I do a lot of work in tax law. In fact, I was exclusively in tax law um, for a while before branching out to other types of areas. Um, SEC compliance certainly is one of them. Of course, as a firm, we do a lot of work in the NFT space and crypto space as well. Business and startup law. I have a lot of clients who come to me and say, I want to start a business. I don't know what I'm doing. Tell me how to do it. How do we start it? What's an LLC? What's a corp? Yada, yada, yada. Uh, a little bit beyond the scope of this particular webinar, but that's another uh, practice area of mine that has been ongoing for many, many years. SEC compliance. Yes, I guess that's why I'm doing this and why you're listening to me. Cryptocurrency law. I dabble in cryptocurrency as an attorney. Um, as a firm, we have a uh, crypto centric focus on our practice area and if you check out our website you check out some of the other things that we do TikToks, etc you can see um, all of the uh, crypto stuff that we are a part of so what is the sec let me give you a little brief history the sec stands for the u.s securities exchange commission and it acts independently of the federal government uh, the sec is responsible for protecting investors and maintaining a fair and orderly securities market there you go. The SEC was formed in response to the stock market crash of 1929. My guess is you weren't around if you're watching this. I know I wasn't, but maybe you were, or perhaps you've heard about it. So in response to that, Congress passed the Securities Act of 1933. The, the goal of the SEC was to regain investors' confidence in the market by establishing rules and regulations to promote fair trading and protection against fraud. What are securities? I'm sure you've heard of the word securities, but sort of what counts as a security and maybe just importantly, what doesn't. So a security broadly stated is an asset that can be sold or traded in a financial market or to raise capital. The most common types of securities are stocks, bonds, ETFs, exchange trade funds, options and mutual funds, 
if you're watching this, you've probably dabbled in one, if not all of those things. I think stocks are probably the easiest way to think of security. I go and I buy you know, Amazon stock online. Hey, great, I just bought the security. Transactions considered investment contracts have to adhere to SEC regulations. Um, so what does that mean, right? Well, you've got the Securities Act of 1933 that broadly defines this. The Securities Exchange Act of 1934 elaborates on this. And then we get to the fantastic Howey test. The Howey test is fundamental when talking about securities. The Howey test is the framework used to determine if an investment contract qualifies as a security. Now, there are four points to the Howey test. Here they are in order. A party invests money. So for instance, I want to go and buy stock in a company, Amazon, for instance. I go online, I use E-Trade or something like that, Fidelity, and I pay money to get stock. In a common enterprise, well, I'm being offered stock, I'm investing money to get the stock. There is a common enterprise with respect to the entity that I am investing in with the expectation of profit. The entire reason why I want to buy Amazon stock is that I hope one day that the Amazon stock will appreciate in value, increasing my wealth, and perhaps I can sell it and pocket some money based on the efforts of a third party. Well, how does the stock increase in value? I believe that Amazon as a company is a great company. People use it. It's going to have a ton of cash, a ton of profits. The efforts of Amazon increase the value of what I just paid for the stock. SEC rules and regulations, the Securities Act of 1933. It requires companies to provide investors with important information about the offered securities. Prohibits misrepresentation and the fraudulent sale of securities. This, this and also the 1934 Securities Act, or otherwise known as the Securities Exchange Act of 34, is really uh, the backbone of the securities market, how the SEC maintains a fair market. Um, these regulations are hopefully clear cut and direct, although of course it can be a little bit overwhelming. So that's why we're here to help you navigate this complex area of law. So what's the difference between the Act of 33 and the Securities Exchange Act of 34? The 34 Act grants the SEC authority over the securities industry. It really helps the SEC regulate the market and grants the SEC the power to regulate the securities market. The SEC, or excuse me, this Act also allows the investors to access financial information of public companies. Most common SEC violations that can lead to an SEC investigation include insider trading, misleading investors, selling unregistered securities, theft of funds for personal use. Okay, so who needs to register with the SEC? Very important as well. Anyone selling securities needs to register or be considered exempt. This includes many, many crypto companies. If you're watching this, perhaps you're a crypto company. Uh, but what about the folks behind such companies? Well, the officers, directors, and principal stock owners of publicly owned companies certainly need to register as well. Again, the whole point of this is transparency um, in order to avoid investor fraud and make sure that there is uh, sort of this fair market in the securities market. Okay, potential securities in crypto. Perhaps you've heard of an ICO. These things kind of blew up several years ago. I don't want to say that they've died down a bit, but we've sort of shifted the crypto market to uh, NFTs, but ICOs, initial coin offerings. Lots of people say, well, hey, this is just a utility token. It's not a security. Um, we'll get to this a little bit more in a second, but it's possible that this is a security. How about a DAO? We hear about DAOs. Everything's a DAO these days, too. Decentralized autonomous organization tokens. Potentially a security. NFTs also potentially a security. DeFi products, interest-bearing products, and we'll touch on this in a second. These can be securities as well. Here we go, it's in bold. It's important to be aware of whether your product falls under SEC jurisdiction. You don't want to make a mistake and have to deal with the SEC. Determine whether securities laws apply to your tokens before promoting or selling them. 
very important, and that's certainly where an attorney can come in and help you. Okay, so why register? Well, if you register at the SEC, hopefully you're preventing harsh penalties ranging from thousands to millions of dollars. Wow, well, that's that's a lot of money. I certainly wouldn't want to pay that, and neither do you. Uh, failing to register can also spark an SEC investigation. Perhaps you've heard of subpoenas, whether it's in regards to SCP, SEC excuse me, or otherwise, but the SEC has subpoena power. That means you're being investigated. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. An enforcement division, it's, it's one of five divisions that makes up the SEC, um, and it's responsible for conducting these investigations and pursuing penalties to individuals and organizations that violate SEC laws. Keep in mind that these are civil, not criminal. Um, but these penalties can certainly destroy your business. Also understand, too, that the SEC can make a referral to the Department of Justice, the DOJ, for uh, potential criminal enforcement. So there you go. Um, again, the big thing here is you've got penalties, investigations. You know, they start off civil. They can go criminal as well if the DOJ uh, wants to investigate based upon a referral. So. Certainly, you want to avoid all of these bad things by making sure that you're in compliance with securities laws. Once the enforcement division has gathered enough evidence, the SEC will decide how to proceed through civil or administrative actions. You can have penalties, severe fines, severe financial penalties. They can easily reach tens of thousands of dollars per violation. How about disgorgement? What does that sound? That doesn't sound fun. The repayment of ill-gotten funds, that can mean everything that you've raised in a security raise. How about suspension from serving as director or officer of a company? That's a no-go. If you get in trouble, you can't just say, all right, I'll go ahead and just do something else with my life. It's not that easy. You can be suspended from having the ability to serve as a director or officer of a company. How about being barred from associating with the securities industry? That's brutal. Again, if you have some big idea that you want to part, you know, participate in or, or, or run in the future, you may not be able to do that. And that has serious consequences down the line. Well, Ripple Labs versus SEC. My guess is if you're watching this webinar, you've heard of Ripple Labs, you've probably heard of their token. So their token was the XRP token. Ripple Labs and the SEC have been in an ongoing battle regarding the XRP token. That's true. There's a civil case um, in December of 2020. The SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple claiming that they raised $1.3 billion illegally through the sale of their XRP tokens. The company, XR, uh, excuse me, Ripple Labs, never registered XRP as a security. It certainly has been a highly publicized case. Um, it's going to set an important precedent for other token funding projects. We'll see if the case settles. We'll see if it actually goes the distance. I'm not sure, but that is a major, major case. I'm sure you've heard of it. How about another really big case, BlockFi versus the SEC? You've probably heard of BlockFi and their lending tactics. So the SEC charged BlockFi um, with operating their BlockFi interest accounts for about 18 months without registering these accounts with the SEC as a security. So what happened with these interest-bearing accounts, the BIAs? Well, they had to pay back $100 million in penalties. Um, I don't have $100 million lying around. I don't know if you do. That's a lot of money. BlockFi agreed to pay that. That's probably why you've noticed that U.S. folks can't get these accounts anymore, these BIAs. Um, Coinbase versus the SEC. Um, Coinbase's Lend program was canceled after they went to battle with the SEC. So basically, they wanted to avoid the BlockFi uh, penalty occurrence and said, all right, well, we're canceling that. How to protect yourself against the SEC. Option one, registration. Form S-1 is the first step of the registration process. Part one of Form S-1, the prospectus or legal offering document includes essential facts about the security itself. Part two of the Form S-1, fully executed contracts, the recent sales of unregistered securities, etc. This is what you are disclosing to the SEC on a Form S-1 in a formal registration filing. You also have to continue to file annual and quarterly reports, so there's an ongoing filing requirement. What about the costs? Approximate costs, I'm gonna ballpark at around $50,000 or more. So it isn't cheap, but you can do formal registration should you choose to do so.
How about an exemption to registration? You've probably heard of these types of things like Reg A and Reg D and things like that, but you may not know what they actually mean. So Regulation A, for example, and there's a bunch of these, but Regulation A allows a private company to raise up to 50 million. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, you can raise up to 50 million under Tier 1. Not bad, although you're not exempt from blue sky laws, meaning you still have to comply with state laws individually. But how about being exempt from blue sky laws? Tier 2 lets you do that, and you can raise up to 50 million. So Regulation A is something that is sort of bifurcated in two different tiers. You have to follow the rules of Reg A, Tier 1, Tier 2. We're not going to get into that um, more in depth here in this webinar, but understand that this is a tool that can allow people to get exemption from reg regulation, formal regulation, and still raise quite a lot of money, I think. You may have heard, well, let's back up for a second. Approximate costs 100,000 plus, again, generous uh, legal fees costs. It can be quite expensive. Now, you may have heard about another exemption, Regulation D. I think a lot of folks have probably heard about this. Regulation D allows small businesses to sell securities without SEC regulation, uh, registration. That's very, very true. There's a couple of different options under Reg D, rules. Rule 504, limited offerings. Rule 506B, private placements. Rule 506C, general solicitation. Again, the purpose of this webinar isn't really to go in depth with respect to, well, what's the difference between one or the other? Tell me about uh, you know, credit investors. I know, I know there's something about that. How many credit investors can I have, et cetera, et cetera. This is just a concept of helping people understand that there are other ways to come to compliance other than formal registration, although, of course, formal registration does exist, of course. Um, again, we're ballparking around 50,000. I would say, in my professional opinion, generally speaking, a Reg D exemption is cheaper and easier to accomplish than a Reg A exemption, but I don't want to scare people off completely and make you think Reg A doesn't exist. It does exist, and it's something that um, could potentially be right for you know your business and your security raise needs. Okay, um, people call in all the time and they say, what, "What about foreign companies and things like that?" If I just form a company offshore, that solves everything, right? And I say, uh, "No, not really." Um, we we say that securities outside of the U.S. don't need to be registered with the SEC. Um, Reg S is essentially for either U.S. companies that sell, offer securities in total offshore transactions to non-U.S. investors, or conversely, non-U.S. businesses um, that offer it offshore to U.S. investors. I don't really see that happen a lot. I mean, usually it's a U.S. business that says, okay, I'm just not going to sell to U.S. folks. Um, so, you know, how, how could we potentially do this? That's where I guess um, rules 903 and 904 permit the issuance and resell of unregistered securities under certain conditions like those conditions I just said. Um, I would certainly say this is a cheaper option because you're not um, formally filing anything under Reg S, although there's sort of um, some things you need to do, certainly to make sure that you're in compliance with Reg S. So we ballpark around ten to 20000 in costs. So that's known as Reg S. That, that could be something that could certainly help um, your business if you're not offering to U.S. folks. In theory, you may not even have a U.S. company. It sort of depends um, on your needs as, as a company and, and things like that. Um, so, you know, the whole point of this webinar was to give you just sort of a broad brush stroke view of securities and how this sort of works with crypto. We see this a lot these days in the crypto space, ICOs, NFTs, DAOs. We get a lot of consults and people reaching out to us. Um, feel free to register, or uh, excuse me, feel free to schedule your consultation today with one of the attorneys here at the Gordon Law Group. It is a confidential consultation where we can discuss different things, whether you hire us or not. We're happy um, to learn more about your business needs um, and to discuss how you can comply with the SEC and how we can help. So we certainly look forward to speaking with you. Um, we hope you learned a lot. Again, my, I'm Michael Brainwine, one of the senior attorneys here at the firm. Uh, you may have seen one of the past webinars. Hopefully this webinar helped you a lot with understanding um, some avenues to achieving SEC compliance, whether it be through formal registration or an exemption to registration like Reg A, Reg D, or Reg S. And again, uh, don't hesitate to contact us at the Gordon Law Group. Schedule a conf confidential consultation today. Okay, until our next webinar, thanks so much. Bye-bye.